Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame. Cinnamon Sugar's up under here and um, I need to either wash her or retwist her up so, you know, ain't even no reason for her to even make an appearance. Look y'all, so I just got off work maybe two hours ago now, right? Now, when I got off work, I was talking to one of my coworkers, like we was out in the cold talking, like the conversation was good. But that ain't why we're here. Look, okay, so I do have other footage I have to put out for y'all to see from my time when I was back home in Montgomery, Alabama. But um, in the meantime, in between time, I got to tell y'all about something that did happen, right, while I was there. I'm sorry, I got, I got to tell y'all about this because it bothered me. And I was just like, I don't even understand. Like, it, y'all, I promise y'all, I be minding my business. And people stay trying to test somebody gangster. And I just be like, baby, I'm at home. Like, why? Okay, let me just tell y'all. Because I know y'all probably like, okay, what done went down now? Okay, so y'all know that I planned a surprise for me to go and pop up on my mom and them down in Montgomery, Alabama. I did that. Everything went well. Even though I didn't want to drive and all that or whatever, I did it. I made it. It was great. I surprised everybody. It was amazing. Okay, so one of the people that I surprised was my sister, obviously. I told y'all that my sister is a judge. <clears throat> is this the side here for... I don't, I don't think, I don't think so. It'd be, it would shock me if she was over here at a bank. Y'all, I'm at the bank because I'm about to put some money in that account for my folks for their um, gift. Um, my mama's birthday gift, my daddy's Christmas gift, and my mama's Christmas gift. So, um, they need money. And, um... Uh, I always try to make sure that I provide some money. This is from my my personal, you know, money. This isn't from the money that y'all have given me for gas to go down there. I, and again, I cannot even stress enough. Thank everyone so much for the prayers and for the financial blessing so that I can get there and get back in one piece. It was terrible as far as how cold it was. I'm going to get into that later on, like I said. But, um, yeah, so... I told y'all my sister is a judge, right? Now, when I went down there, it was the 22nd, okay? Now, this is the same day I got in. So, all while I'm driving down there, I'm saying to myself, I wonder if my sister is actually on the bench today. Or if she's doing something from home. Because she does have to do virtual stuff sometimes. Y'all, let me hold this for a second. Let me pause this for a minute because I'm pulling up to this little area. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So, um, I'm on my way to go pick up a package. I had to get it rerouted somewhere else because I didn't trust that um, since the person ignored my email or the company ignored my email to just send it after Christmas, I didn't trust that my package would be there um, at my door or under my mailbox in a locked building because of dusty people who live above me. So, I'm on my way to go get my package. And then I have other packages that already, you know, always get rerouted somewhere else anyway, which I'm thankful for now thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, so back to what I was telling y'all. Okay, y'all. So I'm thinking about, okay, since I got there on the 22nd, <clears throat> which was what, a Thursday, I got there that morning, late that morning, and I'm killing time because I'm saying to myself, okay, I know how my parents are. They are uh, night owls, so they're sleeping in. My daddy might be awake, but my mama, she gonna be in and out of consciousness all day, and she definitely was up all night because I be sitting up there loving and liking posts that she posts because she really is a night owl. So, I'm trying to kill time. I said, okay, let me go gas up and get me something to eat. and. I thought about it and I was like, oh, well, I've never eaten any of the food out of uh, any of these uh, membership stores, right? I'm gonna trust you and you won't get over. Child. So, um, <clears throat> I kept hearing about how good the food was for it to be so cheap. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not eating bad. I'm, well, I'm not eating good right now, but what I wanted, it wasn't gonna be the worst. So, I went in, and so, like, first of all, I have to say this. The place that I went, it always has a special place in my heart because I used to take my uncle there once or twice a month, or basically whenever he wanted me to. 
because I was literally the only person who was taking him for the longest. Um, <clears throat> I would go to his house, clean his house from top to bottom, make his bed, wash his clothes, wash his bed sheets, all of that. And he would give me a little something. Now, for those of y'all, as I've already mentioned before, for those of y'all who are from Montgomery, Alabama, or you are especially uh, a part of the Briar Pond or um, ma'am, I'm gonna need for you to go around because I'm going to speed limit and the person in front of me is too and you about to wreck this good old BMW SUV. Child, so anyway, um, the uh, Macedonia community, my uncle used to be the person that was over the community center and they call him Sonny. But he passed away in 2010 and you know what I'm saying, but that's the uncle that I'm referring to as far as who I used to go to his house and clean and make his bed and wash clothes um, whenever he hadn't done it and all this stuff. Now, he just had money to burn like that. So I would use that money to pay my phone bill, fill my gas tank up and all this stuff. Cause at the time I was attending Alabama State University, which is where he graduated from as well. Um, <clears throat> and you know, he had money to burn. He, you know, his place was paid for where he lived and like he could buy whatever he wanted. Like he didn't have no wife, no kids, like he had nobody. So he didn't have to fend for nobody but, but himself. So him throwing me a couple of dollars was nothing to him. So that's what he would do. He would give me enough to basically fill up my tank and I could pay my phone bill. Like one, I think it was like every other week. So one week I pay my phone bill and then the next week I would, uh, the next two weeks that would pass by, that's when I would use the money to uh, pay for gas to fill up my tank. That's what I would do. Could you? Mm. So anyway, I'm gonna sit here and tell y'all the rest of everything and then I'm gonna go um, inside to get my package because all I gotta do that's left now is to retrieve my packages one from here and one that will definitely be from um where i want to go i don't want nobody near me because they be doing the most um one from um the access point so that's what i'm gonna do anyway Ooh, that was not it <laughs> child these people be trying me so bad i don't even know what i'm doing oh i cannot wait to tell y'all about how I, how i did yesterday it was bad Ooh, child. Uh, so anyway, I promise y'all this really is not gonna be long because I just I was so done with what happened. All right. <clears throat> anyway, all right, I'm here. Turn this car off. All this good stuff. My bad, y'all. So anyway, um, but yeah, that's that's who I'm talking about. My uncle. So like I was saying, the reason why I brought my uncle up is because the place I used to take him to all the time. I used to take him there all the time, and he's now deceased. So that's a it holds a special place in my heart because that's where I used to take him and I have a membership there. So I go get my gas from there if I don't do nothing else and all of that or whatever, because they don't have a Costco anywhere near me. So I just settle for the next best thing. I mean, all of them pretty much are the same. So whatever. Anyway, so when I pull in, it's packed. When I tell you, oh my gosh, all the pumps were packed. I'm talking about into the parking lot, long lines. Oh, child, my stomach growling. Y'all might hear it. I'm sorry. All I had was oranges. I had a, uh, I had two oranges. I had one on my first break and one on my little lunch break. So I haven't eaten, really. I'm trying to eat because I have um, apples and oranges. They get apples and stuff every year. Apples and oranges every year. And I had to get me a bag of each before I left home, y'all. Anyway, so... <clears throat> So I was, I just said to myself, look, I'm hungry. I'm going to go in the place and hopefully they got what I want. So when I come back out and I want to get gas, I can wait in the line to eat. Well, I thought I could do that, but the line decided they wanted to go fast. <laughs> That's the one I got in because I took one bite and I was about to be up there. Like I really was like four or five cars behind. It was bad. And they was going slow at first. And it's like, as soon as I unwrapped my plate, it was like, all right, it's time to go. I was like, golly. So anyway, y'all. I'm wondering whether or not I'm going to be able to see my sister because I know, depending on what she has going on, if she is actually at work physically and not doing any of the cases virtually, that I will be able to sit in on the cases, depending on what it was. 
So I get home. I had to surprise everybody. I'm going to tell y'all how that went if I didn't already do that in um, the, the first video that I put up. So my daddy was like, um, I think she on the bench today. My mama, she checked. And, you know, basically she was informed that she was going to have visitors, a visitor that want to sit in on the situation. And so I was like, OK, so, you know. I'm saying to myself, my sister's smart. She's going to figure out that it's me. Like, she's going to be like, all right. That's what I'm thinking. Child. So we got there. Y'all, I'm going to have to cut this off and then bring it back. Because I, I ain't got no room. I need to I need to learn how to use a camera and get a camera, y'all. It's so sad. It's so sad. Let me do that now because I'm about to run out of space. I'll be back. All right, y'all, I'm back. I didn't know how the recording situation was going because I was like, Lord, what, what happy in? Y'all don't pay no attention to my little chips in the back. It's some, some sun chips, child. Anyway, so I'm trying to figure out if my sister going to be on the bench. And so they called ahead and let her know that somebody was going to come in. Somebody wanted to come in, come in and sit in on, um, on one of her court cases or whatever, something like that. And so... Y'all just got to park next to me. Y'all just got to. Y'all just don't. Y'all can't survive if y'all can't park next to me, Lord. I swear. Anyway. So, um. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, okay, you know. I understand that because she's a judge. That a case could run long. But, like, I'm saying to myself. I'm thinking as a former state worker. That I'm like, okay. More than likely they gonna get off early or something like what is going on like i know in recent years they've been kind of trying some of the state like the state workers like playing with them like they ain't gonna let them be off and i'm like man we used to be off for nothing all the time every time i look up they be like oh you know we off so don't forget you don't come into work we get paid and i'm like what what we off for it was the most random holidays child we used to be off of everything and i was here for it because i was getting paid so i was like thank you i don't care <laughs> I ain't gotta be here and I'm gonna get paid anyway thank you so I didn't know how that situation was gonna go but since we knew she was in her courtroom doing stuff she had cases and stuff she was working on that she was gonna be there so we get to the courthouse first of all y'all I used to have social work cases that I had to go down to that particular court to um appear and somewhat represent my uh clients or you know figure out what was going on because it was an open case to the department so it was what it was especially when you know i'm a i was a child protective services social worker so we had guardian ad litems that were there gals which are the prosecution slash you know lawyer really the lawyers for children so when cases like that would come about if it was a very, very mainly if it was a very very serious case but if I could, I was going to try to go to all any case that we had open somewhere. I would have to do that. So there were times that I would be there and I went to that particular place. Y'all, I, I didn't been down there so long. My daddy had to tell me where to go. And I was like, oh, my God, I felt so embarrassed that I didn't even know how to get there. And I mean, it was literally up from DHR. And it's like, how you don't know how to get to the courthouse, Jesus? I was so tired of my I was so tired of my spirit of myself. I was like, God, Lee. So we get there, and I, you know, as we get close, I'm like, oh, I see where we at, whatever, whatever. And so I pull in, everything still looks the same. Child, we get out the car, right? My daddy has never been through the front. My sister always brings him in through the back, which means he bypasses metal detectors and all of this. Now, my daddy has a metal rod in his, what, leg, knee, something, I think his back, something. And so he got metal and all this stuff, so he's been able to avoid stuff. And so he was like, I ain't never been in through the front. I was like, well, that's the only way I ever known. So, you know, you're going to learn today. So he get out the car. We walking and talking. And I'm just saying to him that, you know, it's amazing how this place has not changed or whatever. So we get to the door. We ain't even opened the door yet. Some woman standing outside that actually does work there. And she was like, hey, how you doing? I had on the glasses that I had on at the time. The glasses that I think y'all first saw me in. The woman set it off over the glass. She was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, I can't wait till I get some. She said she was going to buy her some more glass, and I wanted to tell her so bad. I think them glasses might have been a dollar, so ultimately $25 because the prescription is what makes it actually more than a dollar for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to do $10 for the lens and, and 
ten dollars for the lens and fifteen for something else or whatever the prescription or whatever it is on the site I go to. So I was like, child, this this these glasses was a dollar. They was either free or a dollar, which ended up being twenty five dollars, less than twenty, less than thirty dollars. But but go off though. So anyway, we get greeted. She said it all. So as soon as we step in the door, you know. The metal detectors and things are there. So the one was like, hey, how y'all doing? Whatever, whatever. So then she starts looking at my daddy like. And I'm looking at her like, Lord, here we go. Somebody know you. Somebody know you. Y'all don't be understanding. <laughs> y'all be understanding. I be so tired of my spirit sometimes. I be like, Lord, who don't you know? Who don't know you? But the thing about it is, I'm just glad that the people who know my daddy, it ain't no, they want some smoke with him. Like, everybody live for my daddy. Most people who recognize me, who actually know that it's me, it's always a good situation. And the times that people thought that I was somebody else, thank goodness it was somebody who is great, who has great vibes and who's pretty much like me, apparently. I'm just like, Lord, please don't, mis don't mistake me for no trash like the side here for somebody. So anyway, the woman looking at my daddy like, God know you like what I was like Lord because like I told y'all my daddy has always bypassed this part he would come in through the back and lead back out out the back so he's never had to encounter this woman before and that's her job to make sure we ain't got no weaponry and whatnot so she looking at him she was like who are you who are you here to see and then he ended up saying my sister's name and then she looked at me and she was like, who are you here to see? And who is he to you? <laughs> and I said, I'm here to see the same person. She's my sister and he is our father. And so she was just like, just, just come on through. I Come on through. I was like, oh my God. I'm talking about the woman didn't even want us to put our stuff through the metal detectors and things. I was like, Lord. It was so funny. I was like, nah, daddy, let's just put our stuff in here. Because we ain't finna get this woman fired. So we put our stuff in there <laughs> so it could go through the machine and all that stuff. And we walk through the, you know, stand alone metal detector. Okay. You would think that's it, right? No. So every time we encountered anybody on our way to my sister's courtroom, somebody was setting it off. So then the next person we see is uh, this guy who used to work with my daddy. He is now my sister's bailiff. This man, fine. I know I'm wrong, but this man fine. If he ain't got no wife, then what's wrong with you? Outside of you being fine, you fine. But but what? I don't know how old he is for him to have worked with my daddy. But this man fine, and and life has treated him quite well. That man fine for no reason. I would bust it wide open. <sighs> Tell him bring it back. Okay, let me let me stop. So anyway, that's not the point. But yeah, so I already knew who he was. And, you know, he greeted us. He was like, hey, how y'all doing? Da, 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 da. He already know. He already know what's up. Like, ain't nobody give him no heads up or whatever. So then, as we are, we pass through the first set of doors leading to her chambers. Leading to her, her um, leading to her courtroom. So then, this guy is walking towards us. And he making eye contact with me. And he looking at me like, don't I know you from somewhere? I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm tired in my spirit. Tell me why the person who said, don't I know you from somewhere is a whole lawyer that used to work on several of my cases. I think he was the guardian that lied him for the uh, children on my cases or something. Child, I was like, yeah, I used to work here. I used to work for DHR as a child protective services, social worker, and Cause I looked at him. Cause when he said that, I said, don't I know you from somewhere? Cause he was looking at me and I was like, wait a minute. Like we both was like, wait a minute. Don't we know you from somewhere? <laughs> so he was like, yes, I, I know. I, and I was like, Oh my gosh, I cannot. I was not expecting to walk in here and know anybody or for anybody to recognize me. That's the last thing outside of my sister. That was the last thing I was expecting. Okay. Y'all. So now we are finally about to be at her door. So the bailiff opens the door and a case is ending or whatever. Like it ain't no deep case going on. And so like it, they literally had just finished. She was talking to them or whatever. The case had already let out. Some Y'all, before that even happened, before we got to the first door, 
somebody out in the waiting room who was going to be under one of the cases. I don't know if it had nothing to do with my sister or not. Somebody that, that called my daddy that guy. I'm trying to tell y'all. People live for my daddy. Everybody know my daddy. I don't know if it was because of the mechanic work he's done to vehicles. Was it because he helped to build a house of theirs? Was it because he rebuilt the motor of lawnmowers and whatnot? Like, my daddy is a jack of all trades, and he know how to do everything exceptionally well. You know how some people, they are a master at this, but they they do all right with the other stuff. No, no, no. My daddy know how to do all everything he know how to do. He does it exceptionally well. And um, basically, he had side hustles. And that has helped to pay the bills. Thank you, Lord, for, for all my daddy's side hustles because that was the only way we was able to survive. So anyway, I don't know who this was. Some woman that said it all. Hey, baby. I was like, oh, Lord. We can't even get... When we gonna get to see my sister, Lord? Every person in the building know us. What is going on here? So like I said, now we are finally at the last door. The bailiff opens the door. My daddy's in front of me, y'all. So my daddy's tall. My daddy walk in and so you know she's used to seeing him like it ain't no surprise like my daddy is a very 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 proud father my daddy is he sets it off he has always set it off when it comes to us any of our accomplishments any of our accomplishments my daddy always set it off no matter what it was he's very very proud like for him to have been a mechanic for the state of alabama like he had like a little cubicle or a little office or something right I wouldn't have never thought all this was possible, but my daddy had pictures of us, meaning all the kids. But when me and my sister specifically, we would do well in school, he would have our most current report card up there to set it off because it got to a point where as we got older, they were like, oh, well, for every A, you're going to get $100 or something like that. Child, we was racking up. We already was doing well. My sister, I already told y'all. Well, I don't know if I told y'all um, in this video, but my sister has always done over <laughs> what is expected and for me if i get an a in a math class or something oh no it, it, the world got the end right about now Some, something's going on because i hate math but you know i had great teachers whatever we ain't here for that so my daddy in front of me she used to seeing him so then my daddy steps to the side and i'm looking straight ahead because i'm like the bench is right there i know it is the bench is right here she up there and I'm dying there. She said, oh, my God. So nobody that's in the courtroom, which is everybody who works under her and work for her, they don't know what's going on because they off to each side of the room. They can't see what's happening. So she said, oh, my God. What is all this trickery about? What y'all 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 have so much trickery going on. No, no, no. Like she's trying to she's trying to gather herself because I'm there. She didn't even know I was going to be there. Nobody knew I was going to be there. So I'm like, that's the gag. You just don't know. Nobody knew I was coming. So she was like, what is going on here? How are you here? What are you doing here? So she done came off the bench and we embraced. She was like, what are you doing here? How are you doing? And we hugging, whatever. My sister done barely got back up there to her seat before this heifer that's working under her was like, oh, what she do? What's her name? Where she live? So my sister's answering all her questions right. I don't think nothing of it because, I mean, like she was like, y'all, I know y'all see, you know, we kind of look alike or whatever, but that's my older sister, da 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 you know, to set it off. And so she was already introducing me to everybody that works under her. So everybody already met my daddy. Like at this point, y'all y'all know my daddy. Y'all know what it's hitting for. So like I said, this heifer done said it. I was like, oh. Well, where where she live? I mean, she was doing a lot, but I was like, okay, whatever. I don't really care. The questions that she's asking, I don't really care about, you know, whether my sister lets her know what it is or not. I don't care. Child, so a little case happened where uh, I think right before we came in, they had somewhat of a recess or I don't know if the lawyers needed a moment or something, but then they came back in because I know they had exited out. And we ended up going in. Okay. So then, you know, we got settled. And she brought everything back into order, right? Brought the court back to order. So we stand for her and all this other stuff or whatever, right? The case, you know, my sister was like, look, you know, did what she needed to do for that case. And then it was over with. That, that didn't take no time. So then, in between time, we talking. And then she was like, hey, I need y'all to go over to this side. 
because where we were sitting at the moment, it was right next to the witness stand. She wasn't doing a trial, but now she was about to do a trial. So then when we go over there and get settled, she then asks the lawyers that are present that are going to be representing everybody that we're going to see during the trial. Are y'all okay with them being there and explain what our titles were and have been in the past, which obviously clearly means we know not to go outside of here and discuss the case and tell nobody these folks names and all this other stuff, especially me, given the fact that I was a social worker and used to come up in here all the time. So, and so they say, oh no, we don't have a problem with that. And so she was like, are you sure? Because I can have them to step out. They said, no, we ain't got no problem with that. Keep in mind, this is on record. This is something that it can be played back. Like somebody, it, it was being recorded. So everybody, nobody objected to it. Even when the other people came in who were going to be on trial, she asked them as well. And they said, oh, we don't care. It's fine, whatever. So when we moved over, right before we moved over, the half of that had been asking questions, she tiptoed out. So because of the day that it was, I'm thinking, okay, you know, maybe she came in early and had done some things or she was working half a day and now she's leaving now. Despite the fact that it was like three o'clock by now, 2.45, 3 o'clock, that didn't really matter because I know there are times my sister be up early doing stuff and get off late doing stuff and she's on call. So a lot of them are on call as well. So, I mean, her day could have gotten started a lot earlier and now she's not going to have to come in the following day because they finally said the state work is going to be off. And I was like, that's the way it's always been, right before a major holiday day off. But because it was on a, the holiday fell on the weekend, and then I'm I'm just like, y'all already know what it is. Why y'all trying to play that? This is a major holiday. All them other random didn't make no sense for us to be off holidays. I get that. But Christmas Eve and Christmas, go, go ahead and do what y'all normally do, because y'all trying it for no reason. I mean, apparently they waited till super late to finally verify, yeah, y'all gonna be off Friday. And I was like, okay. So the heifer she had tipped out i'm thinking maybe she leaving and i looked at the time I was like, oh, okay maybe she already worked so the trial the trial has gone on for almost an hour y'all like it was a lot a whole lot was going down and i promise you the social worker in me was definitely awakened because the most was going on so then all of a sudden people swoop in and come get my sister now i'm like wait a minute baby what's going on here because there have been moments where really high profile cases have gone down when my sister worked under a judge. My sister, I'm going to get to that part, has, when she had worked under a judge and done all this stuff where she was outside on break and shooting has erupted. They had to rush them somewhere because somebody that set it off over some retaliation foolishness like, y'all, a lot of this is news has already been broken in the news, so it's not like I'm giving up some information that's privy only to the courts or whatever. Like, if you want to look back on it, like, look, over the last seven years, almost eight years, just look back on some, some shots ringing out at the court, on the outside of the court, people trying to do some retaliation. Like, people, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember if the man got killed or not. Because in one of them cases, somebody retaliated after court off the premises and killed the person within a week's time like it was it was some foolishness it was a lot of things going on but this wasn't where my sister was working at the time so yeah anyway so i'm thinking okay is somebody upset because it y'all if i could tell y'all woo child it, it, it wouldn't have surprised me if it had something to do with the case that she was presiding over in that moment so in my mind i'm like okay why are they rushing my sister out what happened what kind of random evidence has appeared? Like, what's going on? Is somebody fighting? Like, what? So then she come back in, and then she get back on the bench, and she was like, all right, y'all, I'm going to take a 10-minute recess. And I'll be back. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So then she immediately was like, hey, y'all come to my chambers. So I'm excited because I've never seen her office, obviously. I did. I missed the um, robing ceremony, and... You know, I've never sat in on her doing anything like this before or whatever, right? Never seen her in lawyer mode or it definitely not in judge mode since it's only been three months since she's been one. So we go back there and I'm so happy. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And it's crazy because uh, with some of my cases, I actually got to kind of go back in one of the, the judge's rooms. Something had happened. 
on one of the cases and I did have to go through those halls. So that was very familiar to me too. So we get to my sister's office. I'm like, oh, it's so nice. It smells good. I'm trying to talk. You know, I'm 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 enjoying what I'm seeing. So then my sister busts out and she was like, Yeah, we got a snitch up in here. I was like, What you talk what what you talking about? What's going on? The half of that tipped out went and alerted other people in the building about people who aren't supposed to be in there during a trial. And then when they came in and swooped in to get my sister, they tried to play it off as, oh, we just want to protect you. We're just protecting you. We don't want anything to happen to you. We don't want you to get into trouble for having them in there. And so my sister was like, I'm not dumb. Like, I already asked everybody, were they fine with them being there? And I explained what their backgrounds were. So I, I don't understand. So... After she said that, I promise y'all, I was just like, why? Like, out, my mind was blown. Now, my daddy, he'd have seen a lot in his life. He'd have been through a lot. So, it kind of didn't surprise him. But he was like, yeah, it's a shame. But I just could not get over it. Like, I just be like, I'm minding my business. Like, we didn't do nothing. You would have thought we came up in there and then, like, secretly got in the corner and got on the phone. I was like, girl, guess what's going on in this trial I'm sitting in on under my sister? Even what my sister got going on. You would have thought that was going on. We had our phones, right, even though we weren't supposed to, but we weren't on them. And we weren't recording anything. We were not taking pictures. We were doing nothing. Our phones were out of sight. So I'm just like, I would understand if we were doing something that would obstruct justice or something like that. Like, what, what, what is the problem? So my sister was like, you know, I know the people that I'm dealing with, and she just don't know that I know that it's her. But it is what it is, because they didn't even tell her who it was. And she was like, well, I already know who it is. And she was like, that's the reason why the heifer tipped out. I was just like, you cannot be serious. This is some foolishness if I ever heard foolishness in my life. Like, y'all, I, I, I really took offense to that because it's like, why? I'm here to see my sister. I missed her robing ceremony. I've never been able to sit in on her doing any of this stuff, even when she worked under judges. I never got to see her work in that capacity. She was an officer of the court for eight years and I never got to see any of this stuff. I never got to see her at work. She would tell me little things she was doing or whatever, but I never got to see any of this. So for you to sit up here and be in your... Is it, okay, y'all, let me explain to y'all what it is. Ever since my sister got the job that she got before she was a judge, people have been hating. Okay. All of us have had Crown Victoria, four Crown Victorias, right? Which y'all know you can get them from the auctions, whatever. They don't even make them no more, I don't think, unless they started back. I know with some cars, they started back making them, whatever. So we had our Crown Vicks. When she started working there, she still had her old Crown Vic that she was driving when she was going to college before she even went to law school, right? Which, I mean, it was, it was working. It was fine. It got her from point A to point B. It wasn't no luxury vehicle. Well... It was starting to kind of go downhill. And so my sister has money. She had money. You know what I'm saying? She saved money and she purchased a vehicle. And she was able to get it at a still of a deal because one of my father's friends or somebody had it. They didn't want that much for it. And it's a luxury vehicle. It might be older in age, but people, y'all, when my sister rolled up to work with that, the people were hating left and right. And they had brand new, fresh off the lot vehicles. And my sister got a, I forgot, it's her car. Shoot, I think my car knew it or hers. But her car is a luxury vehicle. And I'm just like, you need to tell me you hating on somebody younger than you that has a car super older than you, than your vehicle. And you mad? For what? What you hate? I mean, she said they was hating left and right about that. They stay hating on her for all kinds of ignorant stuff. But it's like, you cannot deny the work that she does. So I'm going to need, if you're going to hate, or, or not even hate, if you're going to have a problem with her, have a real problem with her where she's not doing her work. Like y'all didn't speak up when this heifer, that she actually was one of the judges presiding over a lot of my cases. I didn't know how deep it went. Now, because of the realm in which my sister works, she knows about it. So stuff popped off. This heifer been not doing what she's supposed to do. They done had this heifer up there on the bench for like 30 years and she trash. And I hate the fact that she black on top of that. And it's like, heifer, you got too much stuff going on around here in the city of Montgomery for you to 
basically be this it, it, a disservice to the people. Anyway, I ain't gonna get into that because I'm gonna be the went a whole nother direction. So, oh my gosh, y'all, three months in and y'all hating. Three months, three months in, but y'all want to try to play her like she don't know what she's doing when 99% of what she was doing for the judges, it was all because of her, that they were ruling the way they ruled, they were saying what they were saying because she was typing up this stuff, she was doing all this stuff, doing all the research, everything, it, it was so many times that the judge ain't think about none of the stuff that they was going to do, but it was the fact that my sister said what it was. That's why it got executed the way it did. Because my sister is very, very thorough. My sister is very thorough. She ain't go to... My sister is very book smart. Very, very book smart. So the fact that they wanted to try to come for her, when she really was in there working, you coming for her for no reason. I don't, I don't like stuff like that. So let me connect the dots as far as that is concerned. So right before... Um, the robing and all that stuff happened. They were trying to negotiate what her pay would be because they really wanted to try. They they they, they tried to t they tried to test my sister gangster on that, and she was like, "No, nah, they lowballing me." I was like, "What?" She was like, "Yeah, they're trying to lowball me, and I know what I'm worth or whatever." So they finally agreed upon something, and they really were pushing it till it was really close to the time for the quarter to start. They had to get that together before the quarter came about. So, um. So, my sister said something, and it prompted me to say, Mom, what's wrong with you? I noticed that ever since, you know, the thing's been going on with you, you've been allowing people to basically test your gangster. Like, the, the gangster ain't there like it used to be. Like, everybody, my mama could step into a room, and people, yeah, but you could just feel the chill in the room. She wouldn't have to say nothing. She ain't have to mean mug. Everybody just knew not to try her. I have relatives to this day, cousins specifically, that's like on both sides of the family. They know not to ever try to do nothing in front of my mama and think you ain't going to get beat for it. You're getting a whooping and she's going to be allowed to do so. She's always been allowed to do that. It is what it is. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Like I have, I'm telling you, people do not, people did not play when they, they already knew my mama didn't play no game. She is not to be played with. So since a lot since all the stuff that's been going on my mama has happened you know she didn't kind of gotten a little soft i guess you could say and it prompted me to say something about her gangster i said ma you need to um i said something to the effect of how she need to get back to how she used to be because my mama was pretty cutthroat but the thing is is that it needed to be done like my mama my mama you cannot try my mama and think you're gonna get away with it or you can't sit up here and think you're gonna get over on my mama and, and it's going to go over the way you think it's going to go. My mama be knowing what you up to, but while you in the process of trying to maneuver in your mind, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is how, how sneaky I'm going to be. Like, my mama already be knowing. So, apparently, after I told my mama she need to get her gangster back, because my mama, she laughs. Like, she laughs every time I say something about, um, I'm a G, I'm a gangster, and all this other stuff. My sister... I, some kind of way i think my sister was there and we were on video chat or something and so my sister was like yeah ma you need to get your gangster back because this wouldn't have been an issue if you had had your gangster going because it's like you know my sister can only do so much before they try to you know do the least because she's trying to be in that state in that capacity you know what i'm saying so my mama is like all right now like, my mama would have said, man, they wouldn't have been lowballing my sister like that for real. So, anyway, I said what I said. And after that, my mama been setting it off on the left, right, front, and the back. Y'all, it's some things. It's a whole nother situation I got to tell y'all about that I'm I'm so done, y'all. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And it has everything to do with me. And it's so dumb. And I just cannot. I, I swear I be minding my business that people be trying to test my gangster. And... Everybody just need to be glad that my mama is not in the position to uh to go 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 roll up and set it off because some people would have been good and cussed out long before now. Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to tell y'all about that because I just could not believe that this heifer tipped out to go try to drop a dime on my sister. And it's like she has 
I, when I saw how everybody interacted with one another when we first got in there, I was like, oh my gosh, my sister has all these amazing people working up under her. And they acted as if they lived for her. So pretty much just about everybody lived for her except the ones hating. I don't like that. But anyway, y'all, I, I just had to tell y'all about it. That's on my nerves up because I was just like, wow, I came here to see my folks in action. That's it. Didn't nobody come here to start no drama? Like, what is what is really going on with people? I don't understand. They so miserable. Anyway, y'all, this ended up being way longer than I anticipated to be in my bed. Y'all know how I do. Let me go ahead and get my packages and things and go home because I'm hungry and my stomach about to start growling. All right, y'all. Hopefully, this was entertaining for y'all. I have some more foolishness. I might actually tell y'all about it while I'm on my way to go get my uh, other packages. That's what I think I'll do so that I can kill two birds with one stone. All right, y'all. Have a good day. I'll see y'all later. Bye.